What's up? How y'all doing today? My name is Mike. Um, I have something a little bit different for you today. And it's, it's me being petty. It, it really is just me being petty because <laughs> it really is. I'm sorry, but I'm going to be honest with you because, I mean, why would I lie? Why would I lie? Um, it's only my ego. It's only my face on the internet. So, hey, it is what it is. But I got a brand new camera. Well, it's actually not a brand new camera. It's an old camera, but I got equipment for the camera. Um, I got this new setup with lighting and like all this stuff going on. And I did all this for one reason, so that I could flex on you. Literally, so I could flex on you, specifically you, yes, you. And if there's like a bunch of you, I'm talking to each one of you individually. So, soft flex is the new setup. The hard flex, hold up, and there's a reason for this, right? But watch this, watch this. See that? See that? That's the hard flex. And there's a purpose for that, outside of me just satisfying my own ego, which I do like to do on occasion, right? And it's this idea that when I was in school, all my stories start the same way. I'm just reliving past trauma, like vicariously through these videos. That's all this is, really. Um, the sooner that you understand that, the sooner you'll start to understand my channel, by the way, so... When I was younger, middle school days especially, I played soccer. I ran. I ran like crazy. And you think that as a soccer player, you'd be pretty lean. Um, for those of you who don't know, abs are usually shown at a lower body fat percentage. So if you're like 20% body fat, you're probably not going to really see visible abs on a person. But if you get down to like maybe 15% and lower, that's when you start to see like those cut lines, right? The, the ab lines and I mean, we, we all know what abs look like, right? Um, but when I was in school, I was kind of a big kid and I don't mean like, like chubby per se, but I was never small. I always had big legs. Um, I always had bigger arms, you know, I wasn't really like muscular, oh, I guess I was kind of muscular, but like, I was just like thick, I was a, <laughs> I was a thick boy, you know, <laughs> I was a thick boy, I couldn't help myself, it was just genetic, um, and that was nice in a sense, because like I never had that experience of being like a small child and, and people kind of manhandling me, but it was bad for me in the sense that it was hard for me to find clothes that fit me. I didn't like the way I looked in clothes. Um, I literally had girls uh, turn me down because they were like, I don't want to date a guy who has a bigger butt than me. Is there, hold up. I showed you the front, like, come on now. Oh. I mean, is there. It's there, that, that part hasn't changed at all, right? So the struggle is real. But the number one thing that always got to me, and maybe you can relate, maybe you can't, but the number one thing that always got to me was when people told me that because of my body type, I couldn't get abs. It was like physically impossible. I literally had someone tell me, it doesn't matter how much you work out. It doesn't matter how lean you get. You could be like unhealthy percent, like 5% body fat. Like you're not gonna see your abs, dude. Those words stuck with me that day. Really, they did. And like I said, I hold grudges. I'm a human being. I hold grudges. I get jealous. I get greedy. Um, and sometimes I get petty. So, about a year ago, is when I really learned truly really like really truly learned about like fitness and diet um and that was always the thing that held me back is it's not like i always ate like fast food and things like that like my family didn't really allow me to eat fast food on a regular basis but what i did do is i just ate in excess and my food choices weren't balanced 
So a lot of the time, I would be eating perfectly fine food, but I would eat like three servings of it, three, four servings of it. And if a serving is like 500 calories, I'm eating 1500 calories just in dinner alone, not including whatever I ate in the morning, not including, you know, if I decide to go get some ice cream later or if I, you know what I mean? Like that adds up pretty quick. But once I started learning about calories and learning how to track my calories, that's when I started seeing real changes in my body. And I didn't realize that I was developing abs or that I was starting to see my abs until um, it took me, I think, about five months of like actually tracking calories. And I think I was in like a, initially I was in like a 500 calorie deficit. I went down to like an 800 calorie deficit. I was eating like, well, I was eating like 1800 calories a day, but then I was also walking like 10,000 steps. I was burning like 500 calories a day and just walking like low impact steady state cardio, like literally just walking. Cause I was, I had just graduated. I was unemployed. I didn't really have much else to do. So I was learning about nutrition. I was learning about fitness and I was watching like hella fitness influencer videos, like good fitness influencers, not like, you know, fake natties. I was watching like Greg Doucette. I was watching Will Tennyson. Um, I don't know who else did I watch? I was watching just like all their like calisthenics athletes and things like that. This guy, Mario Tomic, I think. Um, he was the one that put me onto like walking as like a, a, a way to burn excess calories without um, killing your joints because I hate running. I played soccer my whole life. I hate running. I'm over it. Um, so there's two main points of this video that I haven't quite touched on yet. One, your body type. Yes, it matters, right? It's like as far as aesthetically. Um, if I was like taller, then my abs would be longer. If I were shorter, then my abs would be, you know, like smaller or like stockier, um, so on and so forth. So like, yes, there is a genetic aspect to like your aesthetic, like your, the aesthetic of your body, but don't listen when people tell you that you can't get abs or that you don't have them. Like, it's just, you just need to have a low enough body fat percentage. And in order to get to a low enough body fat percentage, you just need to have the discipline to eat in a calorie deficit. Or if you're just the kind of person who naturally doesn't eat a lot, then you just need to be able to like, honestly, if you're at a low body fat percentage, you should probably already see your abs. But like, if you don't, then you probably just need to build the actual muscle there. It doesn't take much. It really doesn't take much. Second point of the video, it's okay to flex every once in a while. Seriously, like you work hard at certain things and you should be proud of what you've accomplished through your hard work because the fact that you have something that you can look at yourself and be proud of means that you genuinely put the effort in and you genuinely did something that most people wouldn't do. So I don't think there's anything wrong. You know, it's like there's a thin line between feeling yourself and being vain. And I think it's definitely okay to to cross that line, you know, every so often and just like allow yourself to feel good about yourself. Um, don't fall in love with yourself. Actually, yeah, do fall in love with yourself. But maybe like don't fall in love with yourself like in the sense that you automatically just think that you're better than other people, right? Um, fall in love with yourself, but don't think that you're better than others. There we go. Um, yeah, love yourself. That's important too. You got to love yourself, right? Because if you don't love yourself, then what are you doing all this for? Who are you doing all this for if you don't love yourself? Anyway, starting to ramble. Point of the video. Spark note version. Flex. Flex when you want to flex. Feel good when you want to feel good. You work hard for the things that you have in life. You're allowed to enjoy those things. If you want to accomplish something, learn what you have to learn to get there. Had I not done my own research about nutrition and exercise, I would have probably never realized that all I had to do was just change the way that I eat. And it was really just that simple. Um, if you want to change your body, I believe in you. 
because I legitimately believed that I couldn't make any changes for the longest time until all of a sudden I woke up one day and I saw changes. And that's a powerful thing. Once you realize you can change your own body, I'm telling you, that will change your entire perspective on life. I know it sounds ridiculous, but people who've been there, people who are going through it, you understand what I'm saying. Once you start seeing changes in your own body, you realize that you can change the rest of your life too. Yeah. Well, that's all I really got for today. Um, I'm just, it's late, man. It's 12.45, I'm still up. I'm trying to learn how to edit videos. But anyway, on that note, um, I hope you have a good night and uh, hope you flex on someone. Yeah, have a good one.